a couple kilometers down an ATV trail and it was a bit of a risk coming back here in my truck but probably a necessary one because I'm going to be pretty exhausted in the next couple days when I leave here because I brought absolutely no food with me out here on this trip. No food whatsoever. The goal is to forge fish and collect whatever I can from these woods using the limited tools I have in this bag. This is mostly camera equipment. Yeah, I've never been to this lake before. I saw it on a map. I saw the trail on a map and I really wanted to check it out. Hopefully it has what I'm looking for. Fish, forgeables, and a great place to camp. It's kind of getting late in the day. I'm really happy to be here, so let's get right into it. Honestly, maybe not the best time to put on the water because that looks like rain over there. Perch over there. Contrary to what a lot of people believe, this doesn't actually hurt the tree. You definitely don't want to strip all the way around it. Just breaking off the loose pieces is totally fine. Rain just started coming down, it's not too hard. And uh, I could keep on the lake if I wanted to, but I figure might as well just get off for a little bit and uh, make sure I don't get completely soaked because it wouldn't be the best way to start a trip. Check it out, there's some blueberries here. <laughs> wow, so sweet. Little candies of the woods. Well, there was not much to that rain and it looks like it's about to blow over. There's staghorn sumac right here. So this here is staghorn sumac. Unlike its poisonous sister plant, poison sumac, uh, this one's not poisonous, it's actually edible. You can pluck these, these fruiting bodies here, and you can uh, kind of filter them out and smush them up and turn it into a lemonade type drink. I've done it before, it was actually pretty good. I think these are a little bit too early for that. You can see the red juiciness coming out of my fingers here. But not enough to make drink from. So that's another good find. There's cattails in this marshy area. We can come back and use those for, uh, for something later. So this here is pickerel weed. It's at the perfect stage where the flowers are, the flowering stage is just finished and uh, it's about to seed. You can see some of the bees around here pollinating a lot of the flowers around here. I think this guy right here. Anyways, this part of the flower, the seeds are edible. This is a little bit before the seed stage, but uh, I've eaten these before. I wouldn't say they're tasty, but they're edible. <laughs> so let me collect a few of these. I really need to find camp and make a shelter because I got to get a fire going because uh, I don't have any way of filtering water and I don't have a ton of time left in the day and it's time to make camp. this is as good a spot as any for now. I don't have too much light left and there's a couple things I need to do before I go, uh, before 
before the sun sets. A rusty drum. Oh, can. Oh, I wonder if you could cook on that. It's kind of rusty though. All right, this is as good a spot as any for now for camp. Nice and flat here. Kind of protected. Decent resources in the area. It's also just getting late, so I don't have many options. So I'll just show you what I got in my bag. I'm gonna set up a tarp, and then uh, get a fire going, boil some water, and uh, get ready for the night. Here's all the stuff out of the bag. Right here's a tiny bit of clothing, which I probably won't use other than for a pillow. Rain jacket, that's my book. This here's all camera equipment. I don't really need to get all into it, but mostly batteries and equipment. Drone, lens, GoPro stuff, inReach, tripod, and then this is for rain. Um, and then here's all the equipment I plan to use. Uh, for the shelter is kind of all this stuff. We have a tarp, we have a bunch of paracord, and we have a bug net because the bugs are horrendous this year. Actually, they're every, every year in Canada. We have a sleeping pad because I don't really feel like taking a whole bunch of spruce boughs from that tree for insulation. So instead, we're just gonna use a sleeping pad and then a little sleeping bag. For the tools that we're gonna use, ax, tiny saw, cooking pot, and then in the cooking pot, we have a bunch of stuff, including for fishing, I have some line and some hooks. This is about eight pounds, it's like half a spool, so I brought two. Two different gauges of wire. Don't need all that, just kind of threw it in. Ferro rod, P4 Leatherman, headlamp, bug net. And for cooking to make things a little bit more enjoyable, I brought a little bit of oil, some salt, and some tiny bit of coffee. And uh, you know what, last minute, I actually just grabbed this off the shelf at Canadian Tire. And uh, I think that'll just kind of make things a little bit nicer for me out here. Oh, the other thing I have is my canoe, two paddles, and my life jacket. That'll make things a lot easier as well as my bag. I'm out here to learn and uh, just, uh, we'll see how things go with what I got. Lots of blueberries around here. Mmm. So the main reason why we boil water out here is because of a parasite called Jardia. That's the main one at least. Jardia is also known as beaver fever. It comes from the stool of animals getting mixed in with the water. And while you can drink lake water sometimes and not get Jardia, it's uh, better that you boil it because it'll kill the parasite. Some people say boil it for five minutes. Others say get just flash boil and, or some say like, you know, get it close to a boil. I usually just let it get to a boil and that's good enough for me. There's other ways to uh, deal with it. Um, Jardia tends to settle, so um, you don't want to be collecting water from like moving water, like rivers and stuff. It's better to collect uh, fresh water from say the middle of the lake because there where uh, there's no current, the Jardia tends to settle to the bottom, or at least so I've heard. In our case, because we don't want to get sick in a couple weeks, we're gonna boil the water. Oh yeah, it takes about two weeks for Jardia to hit. So in a survival situation, if you 
think you're gonna be out in a few days, you can drink the water and you can deal with the Giardia later. I don't know, that's your call. I mean, I hope I don't have to use this, but the mosquitoes have been quite bad. So. The sun's setting and I haven't got everything I want to done for the day. I'm gonna pour some into the lid so it cools down quicker because I'm thirsty. It's so warm, but that's so good. Oh, I needed that. Oh, wow. Dehydrated. Honestly, I think I'm gonna jump in the water really quickly just because I feel disgusting and I know I'll sleep better if I'm just like not feeling disgusting. Hello, neighbor. Canadian crocodile. All right, we're gonna call that done for the night. I'm gonna crawl into bed because the bugs are coming out, aka the mosquitoes, and they're actually uh, quite horrendous right now. So we've got camp established. Seems like a pretty decent spot. The prospects for food are pretty decent. I'm gonna wake up tomorrow and uh, see if I can fish first thing. I don't have a rod or a reel yet or any type of bait, but I have some ideas. That'll be uh, first thing we do tomorrow. But until then, I think it's imperative that I try to get a really good night's sleep so I have a good day tomorrow. Yeah, I just don't understand how anybody would get through a night without a bug net when the mosquitoes are this bad. It, it just doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> you would just suffer so greatly. Do you just like hold on to a tree and pray? Good morning everyone. The sun's been up for over an hour now but I just wanted to let it rise to it brighten up so some of these mosquitoes will clear out a little bit more because they're absolutely horrendous. I'd love to say I slept well, but that was not the case. It's uncomfortable. And these bugs are very loud.
give me my fishing rod. This is about the extent of my carving abilities. <laughs> uh, stump. All right, this will work. I get some line on it. Octopus hooks. These things have just like a little bit better of a chance of holding the fish, fish in, just because of the shape of them. Coffee. <clears throat> Saskatoon if it is it isn't ripe yet but ooh, quite bitter but the coffee's good oh boy that's good I'm on the hunt for a frog. Frogs make great bait. I've been catching frogs since I was a kid and the trick is to spook them into revealing their position and then you'll know exactly where they are and then you can just grab them from behind. <sighs> Had my head down looking for frogs and I look up and the area is really starting to clear up. It's my island or peninsula back there. I haven't scattered the whole thing out, so I'm not exactly sure. But the fog's moving out. It's kind of nice. Come on, I found a nice patch of blueberries. And uh, a nice little sugar rush to get me uh, going on the day. Got one. All right, he's dead. Got ourselves a frog. Now let's, uh, well, let's eat those blueberries and then let's fish. It's an extremely healthy blueberry patch here. I feel like the bears and uh, whoever haven't got to it yet. Mm. I was able to collect quite a few with just a few uh, grabs. Mm. Gotta love it. All right, awesome. Camp's just over there. I'm gonna take my uh, my haul, aka my frog, back to camp. Get on a fish and come back for the blueberries later. Those are perfect. Look at those. catch nice all right let's put them out oh thank you thank you thank you little smallmouth bass but uh it's a start go get the frog go for another whoa oh i hope you guys saw that water snake right there that was awesome it was huge
No. Oh, oh, it's got it again. Okay, this guy's bigger. This guy's much bigger. Much bigger. Much bigger. Come here, come here. Okay, that's a big fish. <laughs> that's a big one. All right, that's a that's a good amount of food right there. <laughs> there we go. Nice looking fish. Lots of food there. And another one. Found another very usable bucket. A couple of shotgun holes though. Honestly, <clears throat> the bite's too good right now to not keep fishing. There's a limit of five per day with uh, my license. Oh yeah, okay. What the heck? Oh, this one's big. Okay. Okay. That's a big one. That's a big, 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 big one. Okay. All right. That's like a, that's like my biggest bass ever. That's like a big bass. <laughs> That's like a big bass. <laughs> what? Okay. Okay. All right, well, that's a lot of food right there. All right, you might be thinking that's a, a lot of food to be taking. And that's right, it is, but I'm gonna be here out here for a few days. So uh, I'm gonna smoke this meat to preserve it so I have food for uh, multiple days. <laughs> okay, so we got four fish, limit's five. Um, I think I'm good. I mean, I could keep fishing and I could definitely get some more, but I'm good for now. I can maybe catch one later today. I'm going to boil some more water and then I'm gonna use the pot to make stew with the carcasses and then I'm going to use the fillets and I'm going to then uh, smoke them to preserve them so I can have them for later. Got a lot of work ahead of me but uh, should be good. It's quite the platter. This is my biggest bass I've ever caught and I caught it on the the hand line. That's uh, That's saying something. I'm gonna scale the fish, gut the fish, put the guts in here, and then I'm gonna fillet them. And then I'm gonna take the inner bones and I'm gonna make those into a soup and then use the fillets to uh, smoke and preserve for tomorrow. I'm gonna slice these thinner first, but all these fillets are gonna be smoked. These carcasses are gonna go in a soup. Well, you can put the fish heads in a soup and you get a lot of nutrients from them as well as there's still quite a bit of meat on here, or at least a little bit. And you can eat the brain, suck the eyeballs out. I decided because I have enough fish, I'm going to uh, discard the heads because uh, it'll just make the fish head soup, fish headless soup, more palatable, which means I can just eat it easier. Looks pretty good. Woo, 
fish carcass. Bone picking bonanza. My first meal in well over 24 hours. The seasoning salt definitely helps. It wasn't the best choice in seasoning salt. It was a cheap one, but any advantage I can take to get this fish into my belly. So I'm going for a bit of a walk to find some sort of hardwood, hopefully a punky hardwood, in order to smoke the fish with. Because currently, there's mostly jack pine on this island and jack pine is very resinous. And you don't want resinous wood because that cooks into the meat or smokes into the meat and it gives a really acrid, disgusting taste. So hopefully there's something on this little island peninsula that we can use, otherwise we're going to have to take the boat out. Look at all these feathers. It looks like some sort of bird was unalived here. Some more in there. Look at that. Almost like a den in here. This is a great spot for porcupine. Actually, look over here, there's some bolettis. Those are edible. Oh. Those are edible bolettis. We're gonna leave them because uh, looks like some other animal has been eating at them. And usually those animals are slugs and slugs often eat other poisonous mushrooms. And last time I ate a boletti that a slug had been eating at, I got Li liquid poo. <laughs> Those are so good. There's some birch bark, at least. It's a dead birch tree. I swear I saw a standing dead hardwood somewhere on my journey today. So I'm trying to locate it because it turns out this entire forest is mostly pine. Raspberries are up too. Raspberry. Not as many as the blueberries, but boy, are those ever good. Here's a nice piece, standing dead hardwood. I'm gonna take that, and then I think there's a small little piece right there. Definitely not enough, but it's a good start.
the second large fillet is missing. It seemed pretty secure in there, so I don't know where it would have got to. So odd. I was originally planning to eat the skin, but the way I've been uh, slicing them thin, they've just been kind of peeling off the skin, and it's uh, allowing me to use this big piece of sheet metal as a cutting board without dulling my knife, so no big deal. All this is gonna be smoked. This is gonna go in the fish head soup pot, and it's gonna cook some more. Honestly, this could be the end of the trip because uh, I gotta use the tarp to smoke the fish, but it's quite windy. So that was a big fail. This tarp is super light duty, so I don't want to bring it anywhere close to the fire. It's so windy that it's just blowing all the smoke everywhere. It's really hard to contain it. I think I scrapped this idea, unfortunately. In any case, I'm gonna to try to preserve this fish another method. I'm gonna use the little Ziploc bag that I brought this oil and salt in. I'm just gonna throw the fish in here and uh, keep it in a nice cool place. Probably just like in the water or in some water or wrapped in a cloth, in a wet cloth. Yeah, feeling pretty beat. So I'm uh, just gonna hang out the rest of the day. Get an early night's sleep and then get after things tomorrow. Really proud and happy that I caught those fish. Obviously a bit upset that the smoker didn't work out, but I have faith that the fish is gonna be fine to eat tomorrow and all will be good. But what I really wanna do tomorrow is just blueberry hunt. Just collect a whole ton of blueberries. I've been snacking on those today and they're so delicious. I just wanna gorge on them tomorrow. Between that and the fish, should have no trouble getting me carried over onto day four. Sometimes it's just nice to get out in the middle of the lake and just get a get away from all the cover. It's much more free out here. Less bugs too. Should get back though because uh, there are still sunset and there's a few things I need to do around camp.
This is pretty, uh, this is pretty grown in. Mostly dead branches, but this is the path into my camp. So cleared it out a bit. Now there's a lot more room. I mean, I got this tripod, might as well make a pot hanger. Those are filthy, I'm filthy. Oh. oh, that's so nice. We're gonna jump into our spare set of clothes. Well, it's not like a full set, it's just long johns and a shirt. And then we're gonna get ready to, well, and then we're gonna drink some tea. So here on land, it's quite warm. Down in the water, is quite refreshing. But now that I'm out of the water with wet clothing, quite cool. So I actually have an idea how to preserve the fish a little bit better tonight. Well, fine. So I had a bit of an aha moment when I just got out of the water and I was really cold after swimming. On land, dry, I was warm. Jump in the water, nice and refreshing. But when I got out, I was kind of really freezing and I realized that due to the evaporation of the water on my clothing there's like a cooling effect instead of keeping all the fish in the water overnight because the water is only slightly cooler than the air it's actually getting a little bit cooler tonight too I'm gonna take my wet shirt that I went swimming in and uh, cover the fish in it and just allow the slow evaporation process of uh, the wet shirt to cool the fish Fish is in here, put my shirt on top. It's actually quite cool to the touch. That's interesting. I'm gonna wrap this up and I'm actually gonna hang it in a tree because uh, there might be some scent on it. And if a uh, problem bear comes around, I don't want him getting into it, so. It's quite cool to the touch. We'll see what it's like in the morning. Well guys, it was a pretty awesome day. A little stressful at times trying to get that smoker up, but holy cow, we caught four massive bass this morning. That's incredible. I think our solution to preserving them to the morning is gonna work. I have faith in it. If not, probably gonna get pretty sick. Bugs are out, so it's uh, time for bed. Good night, guys. Morning, everyone. I slept pretty well. It seems to be a pretty peaceful morning today. I don't think I've ever been as stoked to pick blueberries as I am today. Oh 
is so good. Still quite cool to the touch, but is it, yeah, it's quite cool. All right, time to do the old smell test, the 100% foolproof way to tell if something has gone bad or not. No, smells good. How about we uh, fry up some of this fish for breakfast and then cook the rest into a soup? Sounds good to me. Also got coffee on the way. Gonna go blueberry picking later. Gonna explore the lake. Today's gonna be good. Excited. Are you? Should be. Definitely like low energy, but not like depleted. I've been eating. I've been eating. Don't have much left. And try to stretch that out to three more coffees. I think I shot half of it out. Damn. These balls were such a good find. A little bit of oil. That's good. The seasoning definitely makes things a lot more palatable. Edible is when you can eat the food without getting sick. Palatable is mean, means you can eat it in large quantities without kind of being disgusted by it. There's lots of edible foods out there, like reindeer lichen, which aren't very palatable. Still got a lot of meat left. It seemed to have uh, cooked nicely and preserved well overnight. I'm gonna grill up a couple more strips, make the rest in the soup, and uh, be on my merry way today. I'm cooking up the rest of the fish in the pot. That'll uh, hopefully extend its life a little bit longer. In all honesty, you probably wouldn't do what I'm doing, but uh, if you do it, here's my warning. In any case, that should uh, allow me to have that food a little bit later today, which should be good. I'm gonna collect some things and uh, go explore a bit of this lake because uh, it's a big, beautiful lake, and I've yet to see most of it yet. So uh, I'm gonna hop in the canoe, explore, and uh, while I'm at it, try to just absolutely gorge on blueberries. They're so delicious out here right now. They're like little candies of the Canadian woods, and uh, every bite I get of them just brings a little bit of happiness to me. further on my canoe but I'm gonna go down there and check it out. Uh, 
that is a juicy looking raspberry. There's a couple here. I think they're just coming into season. I have to get a sweet case. Look. No! <laughs> <laughs> wow. So this here is sweet fern. This is a natural insect repellent. I've been looking for it everywhere because the bugs have been quite bad. I don't have any in my neck of the woods, so I'm going to take some of this back with me and uh, toss it in the fire maybe occasionally, and hopefully that'll ward off some of the bugs. We'll see though, right? I've never used it this way. It smells so good. Mm. Be gone, bugs. The blueberries here are outrageous. Those things are huge. Mm. <laughs> All right, we found the spot. See if we can fill this up. Kind of lost track of time, but check it out. <laughs> Filled it up, well, most of the way. I'm just gonna put them in my rope bag. Keep picking for a bit. Not sure exactly how long I've been out here, but I don't think I wanna stay out here too much longer. Maybe I'll try to fill up another one of these. Get back to camp. Probably shouldn't have left my soup out. Maybe should have brought it with me. Just in case there's any uh, big animals looking for uh, Quick, quick, easy meal. That's the second one full. <laughs> Look at that. Those are all blueberries. Don't step on it. Pretty good haul. This is full of blueberries. It's quite heavy and this is close to half full. Anyways, I'm gonna head back to camp and uh, I'm gonna check up on my food. I need some lunch. Time to heat up the soup. That was such a successful haul today. Mmm. Hmm. This is sugar. Sounds like rain. Much more enjoyable eating the pieces without bones in them. That's for sure. I feel rich with food right now, but um Pour with energy. I'm quite tired. Probably gonna take a nap after this, and then I think I'm gonna go fishing again a bit later tonight. Ah, good day. Ah, just little scraps. The winds are fairly strong right now, so the bugs aren't too bad, but there are still a few around. I'm gonna add some of this sweet fern to the fire. I don't really know if it's gonna do much, but uh. So at least gonna make the area smell nice. Quite like that. You know what? Might as well smoke ourselves up with it. Ooh, that is a punch. Yep, that is a nice smell.
took a nap, probably a little longer than I was hoping to. It's getting close to six now, so I'm gonna hop on the water and uh, see if I can catch some fish. Yeah. Yeah, so I just put the camera in the water and you can see that there's water behind the lens. Still works, it's not recording the audio. Should probably keep it off. Dang, okay, well, that changes things. I gotta dry that off and hopefully that'll keep working because it's my, my camera. Camera seems fine, I got the backup lens on it. The standard lens does not look good. Maybe that'll dry out. Doubtful, it could be done. Mike, making weird noises, trying to dry it out. Fingers crossed it works. Check the mic, one, two, one, two. Check it, check it, mic, mic, microphone. I think it's working, maybe. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have figured out the camera situation. I got the mic working again. I dried it out over the top of the fire and it seems to be working great. I got my backup lens on. It's just a fixed lens because uh, I had to put it on because this one, yeah, it has water all behind it. Who knows, maybe this thing will work again. Maybe it works right now. I'm gonna leave it for now. But uh, I put this thing through some crazy rainstorms, so I have high hopes that'll be fine. Anyways, like, let's, let's continue. Not a lot of time left in the day after taking that nap in the afternoon and then the whole camera debacle. I kind of only have a few hours of light left. Not even. An hour and a bit. I have hopes that it'll be fairly easy to catch a fish tomorrow. So uh, I'm just going to get things ready around here. It seems like it might rain tonight. So I'm going to get set up for that and uh, get some water, drinking water ready for tonight and tomorrow. All right, finally in bed. Mosquitoes are nearly as bad as they have been. Like, this is so manageable. Anyways, great day today. Couple blunders, but we caught, we got so many blueberries that we're gonna be uh, <laughs> eating them for the rest of the trip. Rain's coming down now, I love the sound of it. Music to my ears to fall asleep to. Anyways, I got some cool plans for tomorrow, so uh, time for a good night's rest. See you guys in the morning. Good night. I was wondering where my friends have been all day. They're finally here. <laughs> good night, guys. <sighs> Good morning, everyone. Ooh, I slept about as good as you can on one of these. Then mats on top of uh, just hard ground, pretty poorly. Rained for a good portion of the night last night. Ooh. So everything's nice and moist. That's all the coffee ration I have left. No. Should've brought more, but it's still a luxury. Happy I have it. So I'm just gonna have one coffee today and then uh, tomorrow I'll be out. Coffee? 
Blueberries. Ooh. Mmm. Oh, it's real good. Oh. Let's fry up some of that pickerel weed that we picked the other day. It's a little dried out. Who knows if this is still tasty. Might as well try it. I'm gonna use a little bit of oil and just salt. It's kind of winging this. Not bad. That was really not bad. Almost like a crunchier asparagus. Not really looking forward to... Ooh, okay, hello bugs. Oh. Piece of fish. All right, on the casting rock. Nice cast. Doesn't look like a frog, so Let's see if they go for it. I'll be honest, I was kind of surprised that they didn't bite that on first go. This is a pretty spot here. <clears throat> Great spot for bass, eh? So I've been fishing for just over an hour now, all around my peninsula, or island, whatever you call this place. Not getting any bites. Maybe it's the sun. I don't know, the overcast just came out. Maybe I waited a little bit too late. But uh, yeah, not biting. I'm gonna, uh, I got another plan for some food today. Let's do that now. Here's the sumac again. A little juice here, but still not enough to get real juice out of. We're gonna leave it. The whole ground around here is uh, not attached. I think we're on a floating peat mat. So these are cattails, different seasons yield different parts of the parts of the plant that you can eat. But today we're actually going for the rhizomes, which are the root-like structure underneath the cattail. They're high in starches and uh, quite edible. All right, let's see if we can dig one up. Uh, yeah, we got one. There's a good one. Yeah, so these here are the rhizomes. They are uh, what connects the plants from one to another. They're uh, kind of orange on the outside, and then they're like a white starchiness on the inside. Get a bunch more and uh, get on a get on a Eden. Mm. So when it comes to aquatic plants, you got to be careful in which the areas where you forage because Aquatic plants, especially things like cattails and pickerel weed, they're good at filtering toxins from the water. So if you are foraging in a polluted source of water, then those, uh, those cattails, whatever it is that you're foraging, are gonna be high in those toxins. You usually feel it. There it is. Just following it. Oh, look at that one, that's a good one. Good stuff. Oh yeah, that's good. Cattails are useful in a lot of other ways. The leaves make for great material to weave baskets from. We're not gonna be doing that on this trip. Just thought I would let you know. Right, let's get a few more. Let's get out of this sinky, stinky place. Yeah, that's a good one. Honestly, the way this peat moss, swampy area kind of sinks below your feet, it's really unsettling. And so I can't wait to get out of it. <laughs> Ooh, just don't know how deep it goes. That's messy work. <laughs> I 
All right, let's uh, jump in the water and go on to the next thing. Pickerel weed. I'm gonna collect some more of this. Ooh. I'm blown away. Whole ton of bunch berries out here. These are all edible. Fairly delicious. I don't think I've ever seen this many. Never really eaten these in quantity before. They're okay, but they got nothing on those blueberries or raspberries, that's for sure. It's nap time. Oh. Once again, way overslept. It's like four o'clock. Should probably get a fish in again because uh, I don't want to flay that up, cook some dinner, and get it to bed before the bugs. So many blueberries. About four and some hours until sunset. So, Ooh, time to move. We got one. Oh, we got one. We definitely got one. It's official. It's one. Gotta love it. Sweet. Wasn't too bad doing the hand land from the boat. Let's get another one and call it dinner. There we go. I think that's good. That's good eating. We're gonna make two fish fillets and we're just gonna fry these up. In a survival situation, generally I'd eat this. You can pluck a lot of the meat off the bones, but it's definitely less desirable than just the cuts of meat that I cut out, the fillets. Some other animal, like a turtle, will probably eat this. And by probably, I mean they will absolutely will. So I'm going to discard these and uh, just enjoy the fillets. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's cook! Cattail rhizomes. Check it out. It's like coconut white on the inside. Well, you can eat all of this. I'm just gonna take the centers. It'll just get rid of all the dirt off it, and like, there will still be starches in 
the outer shell. I'm just gonna make this meal extra palatable for myself by taking just the inner cores. Oil, salt, that done. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. What does that taste like? It tastes like cattail rhizomes. That's what it is. So familiar. Salt and oil makes everything so much easier to eat. This is the first course of a four course bush meal tonight. Second course at Xander's Backcountry Kitchen is some pickerel weed with some oil and salt. Let's try those. Pickerel weed. Okay, this morning's was a lot better. Maybe letting it dry for a few days helped. The third course on Xander's Backcountry Cookout is bass fillets. You know, that's real food. Yeah, the pickerel weed and the cattail roots, cattail rhizomes, that is just food to get by with. This is like food to thrive with. Yeah, that's really good. Third course done. Now, the final fourth course and dessert. Blueberries. They're a little bit mushed up. Still good. That was a successful meal. I'll save those for the morning. Pulled off quite a bit today, but it's not a stable rock. But still nice to Go for an evening swim. Yeah, that's good. Oh. What a peaceful evening on the water. The sun is warm, it's dry. It's like a comfortable temperature right now. I have a full belly. Things are good. Things are good. This whole trip was pretty incredible. I didn't expect to have a full belly at any point, but on more than one occasion, I feel completely full. I think it's due to the abundance of fish that I caught. Lots of bass here. Good time of the year to be out. Plenty of food in abundance. Lots of blueberries, my God. Gorged on those. Yeah, amazing trip. Probably be up with the sun and uh, going from there. Anyways, good night, guys. <sighs> uh, good morning, everyone. The sun's up, so I am too. Uh, time to get packed up. Cause, uh, I'm heading on out today. This lake really provided for me. I'm so grateful. The pickerel weed and the cattails, not to mention all the blueberries and all the bass fish that I was able to hook into and eat. I was worried that I would be with an empty stomach for a majority of this trip eating lichen again. But no, the bass was plentiful. My belly was full. 
often and I had a diversity of food I was able to forage and eat and I'm just so thankful. This place really provided for me and I couldn't have I couldn't think of a, a way this could have gone better. I think with the abundance of food here I could have gone another couple days, but I'm out of coffee. And that's a big problem. And camera batteries actually, I'm out of those too. So we'll have to go, but we'll be back. Really grateful for this opportunity. It was an incredible one. I'll remember this one for a while. Hope you guys enjoyed that one as much as I did. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. There's no way. It's almost eight pounds.